Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to the Active Trades Monday Market Matters webinar for the uh, 4th of March. It's Paul here. Uh, today, our educational content will focus on how to trade intraday reversals. Fascinating subject, lots we can talk about. And um, beforehand, we'd just like to ensure that the uh, technology is working in our favor rather than fighting us. So for those of you here in the room today, would really appreciate it if in the chat box, you can just confirm that you can see the slides and that you could hear my voice. That would, uh, that would be a great start for us much. Uh, would really appreciate that. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's that's really good. It always uh, helps to make sure the technology is working with us. So um, great to have you all here for what will be uh, an interesting session as uh, as always. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, we'll talk a little bit to begin with in terms of well, why is reversal trading so popular to begin with? What is it that uh, makes it of interest to people? Um, what do we need to look for when intraday trading affects reversals? And, and actually, how could we do them successfully? What are the kind of one or two little hints and tips that could help us do it better than most? Uh, and then, as always, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the live markets and we'll have a little look at uh, as we walk into the start of the, uh, the US session for the week and also see if there are actually any intraday reversals setting up there. Um, it would be interesting to know, for those of you joining us here for the live session, um, how many of you are already trading reversals on intraday markets? Um, it'd be interesting to know what, um, what if any, experience you have of them. Maybe you're new to trading and this is a new subject. You know, either way, that's, that's absolutely fine. That's what these sessions are for. But, you know, it'd be interesting to know if you put in the chat box what if any experience you may have had on uh, trading uh, intraday reversals, because we're going to share lots today, but we're always interested to hear what other people's, uh, other traders' experiences may well be. Uh, just before we uh, kick off, okay, for those of you um, joining us uh, from the you know, from the UK, from London, um, just a quick reminder that Active Trades is sponsoring the London Trader Show this Friday, 8th of March at the Novotel London West. Um, and I will be there speaking. I think I'm on about 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be talking about trading the key reversal set up so uh, it'd be fantastic to know those of you uh, you know if you're joining us that'd be great and uh, myself and Vikesh and the rest of the active trades team uh, will be there and it'd be great to, uh, to see you all please come across and say hello uh, as I said I think I'm talking about 10 o'clock in the morning if you have yet to book yourself a ticket you can do on their website and if you use the code active trade 69 well then that will actually get you access to a complimentary silver pass so uh, everybody loves a fantastic deal and no, no more than their traders um so by all means okay join us there on friday and if so come across and say hello the cash myself and uh, the rest of the active trades team uh, would uh, would love to be able to to say hello so um for those of you who don't know me uh, my name's uh, paul traded for many years okay traded for funds traded for clients uh, primarily i tend to focus on trading fx indices and commodities I tend to be a trend trader for swing and position trading, and I tend to be a reversal trader for intraday, okay, uh, liking mean reversions. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. Patrick says, how do you differentiate between an intraday reversal and an intraday retracement from an existing trend using indicator and without using indicator? Um, that's a good question, Patrick. Okay, plenty there. If you don't mind, what we'll do is, uh, as we get deeper into this presentation, there, there might be a couple of slides where it might be easier to explain it, um, utilizing a couple of charts. Okay, so uh, if you don't mind, we'll we'll look at that a little bit deeper and later into the session. But uh, thank you for the question. That's um, that's a great question to get uh, to get us started. So, um, if you're joining us the first time, Monday Market Matters is all about our regular webinar series with the aim to help traders start the week in the right frame as we prepare for the opening of the US markets in about 24 minutes. Um, so every Monday, two o'clock London time, we take a look at the news, okay, what's coming up for the week ahead. We do a lot of it on education and that can help build your own trading knowledge. Always have a little look at some of the active trades platforms and tools that you have uh, access to as a, as a client. And always we finish with the uh, look at the live markets at the start of the US session. So there's always plenty to talk about. No, you know, we're never short of uh, of good things to, to, to chat about. And uh, 
starting with let's have a little look at the news so we're into a new month okay we're into the third month of 2024 already um, and we've got rather a, a you know i would say suggest that rather a chunky week ahead of us in terms of the the news information that's coming out you hear me say it every week if you're new to trading i don't expect you to be able to maybe analyze the data but it is important okay to know when that data is coming out and we'll find out where that data is from an economic calendar there is an economic calendar on the Active Trades website and elsewhere on the internet. Uh, you know, so there's no excuse not to know when the big data is coming out this week. And we've got quite a lot coming out this week, all right. Um, in particular, we're, what we're looking at in terms of, um, you know, tomorrow in particular, we've got quite a lot of services PMIs. Okay, seeing that being released um, across uh, quite a few. Um, zones and countries. Um, we also have the uh, Bank of Japan, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ueda, the uh, governor there, he'll be also um, speaking and so traders will be interested to see what he has to say um, for himself. Um, on Wednesday, okay, we've got quite a bit of data, as you can see there, there's some uh, Australian GDP data, right, and some German trade balance, but there will be lots of people um, looking at the uh, uh, Bank of Canada's, okay, their uh, monetary policy meeting, uh, some of the PMIs, and also the US JOLTS job openings, okay, that will um, be of interest. Thursday, okay, um, not only do we have, as you can see, Australian, Chinese, Canadian, US trade balances, uh, but we also have the ECB, okay, the European Central Bank, they have their monetary policy meeting. And whilst um, people aren't expecting a change this week, Traders will be interested to see what the uh, what the sentiment is and how the co particular conference goes. Uh, and then on Friday, we have basically Canadian and US data, uh, employment data. So we've got Canadian employment data, and we also have the US non-farm payroll. So lots of chunky information to, to look at. Also, we have here in the UK on uh, Wednesday, we've got our annual budget, and that will be uh, uh, watched by traders. Uh, and we also have Mr. Powell, uh, head of the Federal Reserve. He is is, uh, he's in front of Congress this week, I think, and uh, um, uh, and of course, what he says will be of uh, real interest. Traders will be looking to pick up on any particular comments that he makes regarding uh, markets, and of course, the the sort of the trajectory um, of uh, interest rates within the uh, in the US in this election year. So, first week of the month, there always you know lots of chunky information and data coming out. So, as I say, it is important to know when that data is coming out so you're in a position to 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 be able to uh, avoid what could be volatility spikes um, and also perhaps look at how you could uh, turn it into an opportunity for yourself so you know that's news looked at so let's have a little look at our um topic for today and, and, and we're going to talk about intraday reversals and primarily we're going to talk about fx reversals but really what i'm going to be speaking about it is kind of applicable across across um most instruments okay so um um you know whilst i'll be sharing my experience okay of trading intraday fx reversals and um, the most of the concepts and ideas you know i'll be talking about will and very big they will be useful regardless of whether you're trading you know the nasdaq gold silver euro whatever etc okay so what we find is that in very lots of traders like to trade trends and and many also like to trade the opposite to trade reversals what becomes important is you know if you are a reversal trader then you have to look at well what can i do to improve my chances of success because there are many ways for traders to understand reversals so that they could position themselves accordingly and so in today's session uh, on the educational element, what we're going to talk about is we'll discuss about how to identify reversals and how to engage with markets that are in the process of reversing. And I suppose to start with that, then we will, you know, we will just start at the beginning, which is always a good place, uh, and look at you know what do we need to be aware of when we are examining reversals to, to understand you know uh, where is the opportunity for us as traders. So, first things first, as always, uh, one of the questions has to be, well, why are you trading reversals? Uh, and it may seem a bit of a strange question, but I think it's really important for traders to understand their drivers, okay, to understand why they are operating in such a way in markets. 
are you trading reversals because you actually have an edge okay you have an edge that you can apply in the market that will invariably take you places or is it because your ego is in control and uh, you know you might want to comment on that in the chat box you're very welcome to or maybe even it's just a, a quiet little moment of reflection for yourself but the reason i ask that is that because very often what i see is with new traders is that they are trading reversals but not for the right reasons and one of the reasons they are trying to trade reversals is because actually they've missed the trend they missed the trend they missed the entrance into the trend and now they are engaged in a, in a version of FOMO, that fear of missing out. Their ego is telling them that actually it knows best, and that basically, um, they, you know, they 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 know where the exact top or the exact bottom of that particular trend is, and so invariably they sort of try to take out their frustration by trying to trade reversals into that market. And. You know what i can say from you know years of experience of you know on trading floors and looking at traders is that trading reversals because of fomo or because you're frustrated because you missed the you know the trend and your ego is in control is, is really a sustainably successful way to operate in markets what we're looking to do is to see what can we have as an edge and that edge can come in many different ways it could be a behavioral edge it could be a statistical edge uh, for new traders, what I generally talk about is that you know you can utilize the the fact of having a, a confluence of events. Okay, that starts to become an edge. That's where two, three, four things come together in one time and place. That is what you can utilize to to basically to to really hone and find a particular edge for yourself in terms of generally trading, but specifically when you're trading intraday reversals. So. Let us just very quickly, very briefly, sort of, you know, for the new traders here, just understand ourselves, you know, what kind of market we're in. So um, my view would be is that there are generally five phases to a market. OK, five phases. Part one is the, is the kind of very clear phases where we have the first one here, like a market that is sideways, OK, a market that is going consolidating. A market that is just basically range bound. Hopefully, you can see the way that's working. Alternatively, what you also might have is a market that's in a downtrend, very clear downtrend. Okay. On the other side of it, a market that is in an uptrend. So, of the five phases, you've got three quite clear phases there. Okay. Quite clear phases. And, you know, it is important, I think, for trade, all traders, but particularly new traders even just to be able to understand what phase of the market they are in can help them enormously in making decisions about what kind of trading method they should be employing. What you hear me always say to people is that, you know, trading trends is, is, a, is a fabulous way to start your trading career. But the thing is, I have to say, always say is that good trends leap off the chart at you, okay? You don't need to force a trend. The challenge we have is that markets do not trend as much as we would like, generally somewhere between about 20 to 30% of the time. A lot of the time, okay, they will be either sideways, as you can see, or alternatively in one of the other phases, okay, which is transitioning, okay, transitioning from a, a downtrend to an uptrend or transitioning from an uptrend to a downtrend. And here, in this particular example, you can see there's kind of a clear downtrend and then we get basically a real blow off real sell off there and then actually what happens is we start to basically turn we start to transition from what is you know is from what has been a downtrend to actually to having been you know into an uptrend okay or alternatively you know a market that has been in a very strong uptrend starts to invariably starts to transition okay from what was a uh, you know an uptrend starts to transition into basically into a very clear downtrend okay now the, you know, the reason i put those up is because um sometimes those tra sometimes those transitions are very clear very easy to see and that provides opportunity other times they are not okay sometimes the tops and bottoms of markets can be can be very scruffy to for want of a the use of a word okay they can be not very clear at all and this is sometimes where we find you know, new traders might end up getting themselves chopped up okay chopped about in terms of it and so i think it is quite clear for traders to learn to understand okay 
which phase of the market are we in? Are we in a downtrend? Are we in an uptrend? Are we sideways? Or are we in a transitioning market? And, you know, at the start of your trading career, my general rule is that, you know, if you can identify a market that's in transition, you know, where it's particularly not a particularly clear reversal, well, then invariably my best advice is to sort of just, just to sit on the sidelines, let that market do its thing, okay? Let that market play itself out and then look to start to engage where you can when invariably sort of, you know, it becomes a little bit clearer to you uh, on what the actual trajectory is of that specific market. Because as I said, this is quite often where where um, new traders, having having missed the trend, okay, having missed the opportunity to sell this trend, um, will then basically start trying to to pick to pick the basically to pick the bottom, okay, of the market, and that can be very challenging, okay. So what we need to do is understand the phase of the market, and then start to look at well, what do we need to do? You know, well, you know, if we have the context, what are the kind of patterns and triggers we're looking for that in order can give us some edge, that can give us some understanding of the uh, the market's uh, movement so we're able to sort of uh, identify where the uh, where the opportunities may well be for ourselves so if you know just taking an understanding of the overall phases um one of the ways we can identify possible reversals there are many different ways uh, and i'm going to sort of share three of them today so one of them is price action candlesticks. One is price action reversal patterns, and another one is the previous day's highs and lows. Okay, remember we're talking about intraday reversal. So these are three elements, okay, three ways to identify a possible reversal. But as I said a little bit earlier in our session, um, you know, what starts to become an edge for us is when we're able to combine these elements, when we get a confluence of events. That is where we start to create an edge for ourselves that gives us, you know, a, a sustainable and suitable trading opportunity that we can utilize in our trading business. So if we uh, if we look at the kind of first one, which is price action candlesticks. Now as the slide says, by their very nature, candlesticks are a reversal pattern. Okay. And, and I think sometimes new traders forget that. By their very nature, candlesticks are a reversal pattern. But they need to have something to reverse. Okay. Candlestick patterns are good at the end of a downtrend or at the end of an uptrend. When markets are moving sideways, their usefulness declines rapidly. And I, and I always try and stress that, make sure that you understand and realize that. But there are many different price action candlesticks that you can, you can utilize as a, uh, as a pattern. Uh, four of the ones that I use myself because, you know, they're just simple and they're clear. First one is kind of rejection candles or what might be called a pin bar, might actually be called a high test or a low test, might be called a hammer or a shooting star, et cetera. There are, there are various, um, various names, okay, to, to basically to label what is those rejection candles. And uh, as I always say, I don't really care what label you give to that candlestick. The, the important thing is that is you can show that you can understand what that candlestick is, how it's created, what it is actually showing. It. So when we talk about pin bars here, you know, I would want to be seeing, you know, a bullish pin bar at the end of uh, an up uh, at the end of a downtrend. In the same way that I would be wanting to see a bearish pin bar at the end of an uptrend, because the higher probability move is in that direction. Remember, it's kind of like the the sort of the the wick is almost like Pinocchio's nose. All right, remember the childhood fable Pinocchio. When every told lies, his his nose got uh, longer, uh, and invariably, you know, in this case, in a pin bar, you know, the the um, the invariably the, uh, the the pin is pointing in the direction that is uh, un unlikely okay the lowest probability direction of travel so candles start can rejection candles and pin bars they are like one of the first price hatching candlesticks that you can utilize um one of the other ones is engulfing candles and as the name implies okay these are candles that invariably engulf the previous candle they are not anywhere near as ubiquitous as pin bars and you will see lots of pin bars on your charts but as we we're going to talk about it you know that's all well and good it's about understanding the context okay understanding the context engulfing candles well you know once again it is a case of we're looking to trade in the direction of the close so i want to see a you know a bearish engulfing candle after you know an uptrend or i want to see a bullish 
a bullish um, engulfing candle at the end of a downtrend, okay, because that's giving me the higher probability of where the next move is likely to be. Another one here is key reversal candles, okay, key reversal candles. Let's just uh, do that. That's what we're looking for there, okay, key reversal candles. And just as a, an aside, and um, this is what I'm going to be talking about on uh, at the London Trader Show on Monday at uh, on Friday, Friday the eighth of March. So uh, I hope some of you will join us. Um, but what we're looking for, key reversal candle is, is, in some respects, it's not dissimilar to a pin bar. In some respects, it's not dissimilar to uh, an engulfing candle. In, in many ways, it might be seen to to be a, a collection of the both. So a bearish key reversal candle is one where, after a little bit of an up move, price has pushed high. But then it rolls over and closes beneath the low of the previous candle because that's given us an indication the next direction is more likely to be down. On a bullish key reversal, let's just clear some of these drawers. On a bullish key reversal candle, after a downtrend, price pushes to a new low before it reverses and rallies high and closes up on its highs. But most importantly, it has to close above the high of the previous candle. That's given us an indication the bulls are in control and the higher probability move is to the upside. So key reversal candles, you know, in terms of they, they happen even less than engulfing candles, which happen less than pin bars. OK, but when you see key reversal candles at the right time and place, they can be very useful. And as I said, I'll be talking about them on uh, uh, this Friday. Uh, and then the final are morning and evening star formations, which generally are three candle um, patterns, okay? Some people might exp uh, them, expand them into four, ca four candlestick patterns. I don't um, generally have a, a, an issue with that if it's the um, if it's the right kind of price action. But for new traders, the morning star is, you know, at the end of a downtrend, we have a strong bearish candle. We will normally have either a rejection candle or an indecision candle, followed by candle three, which is a, you know a strong bullish candle, and and, and I, I always like to see us, I always like to see us closing above the kind of fifty percent of the way mark between candles one and two. Okay, that gives me just a little bit more sort of kind of let's say bullish confidence in the in the move. Whereas an evening star, you know, we've been in an uptrend. Okay, we get a strong bullish candle. Candle two, okay, is a uh, it can be an indecision candle, like a doji candle, or like here, a hanging man candle, or might be just a bearish pimba. And then candle three is a significantly strong bearish candle. Uh, and as I say, I like to see it close, okay, well beneath the kind of 50% uh, mark there, which is what it does, because that's given me an indication the higher probability move is to the down star. So um, if you are new to trading and want to understand more about them, you should find in the Active Trades webinar archive on their website, you will find that I've done previous sessions on those individual, uh, individual candlestick patterns. You'll find them there, okay, so you can access them and just go through the individual ones of those um, to your heart's content. Uh, and as I said, uh, this Friday in London, I'll be talking about the key reversal setup. So um, if you're in London, be sure to come along and uh, and see that. I think I'm on, I think, about 10 o'clock on Friday morning. So as I said, that is one of the ways that we can utilize, okay, price action candlesticks in terms of identifying and trading reversals. And um, lots of people will quite happily trade just price action candlesticks as their way of trading intraday reversals. Um, my own view would be, as always, is that I think a confluence of events is what we're looking for. We're looking for two, three, four things to come together at one time and place that basically enables us to give us a good idea, okay, of uh, where the, the higher probability of the next directional move is. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a few moments' time. So if price action candlesticks are point one of how you could trade intraday reversals, the second one is price action reversal patterns. Uh, and remember, you know, what I was saying is that candlesticks by their very nature are a reversal pattern. However, they can actually form part of a much bigger chart pattern. Uh, and there are certain reversal patterns that I think can help a trader on an intraday basis. So uh, one of my particular favorites is the uh, the double top 
okay and, and double bottoms uh, and i also like variations of head and shoulders patterns okay both head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders um rising and falling wedges uh, would not be one that i personally sort of trade a great deal of um but I know lots of other intraday traders who do, okay, and, and who actually find them valuable. Um, but you know, I find the double tops and bottoms and head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders that in itself there is enough, um, uh, there is enough opportunity, enough frequency of opportunity there to give me insight into how to uh, to actually how to utilize these as part of a way to trade reversal patterns. So let me just clear this uh, drawing down here. So. Um, you know, for many people who might be trading double tops, okay, um, it generally as a as a normal rule, what we're looking for is you're identifying a neckline, and when price breaks that neckline, that would be your entry with your stop loss um, above the kind of like the second high. Now, um, in themselves, even just trading double tops and double bottoms, that can be that can be a session or on its own, and maybe that's what we'll do a session on those because there are variations on a theme and how to do that. And as you grow in experience and confidence and knowledge, that might change. But to begin with, if you're able to even just identify double tops and double bottoms, and identify where the neckline is and where the entry and where your stop would be, that can be enormously um, helpful. And the same with head and shoulders. Okay, head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders patterns is that normally what we're looking to see is that we can identify you know the kind of the left shoulder the head and then classically classically the right shoulder in classical technology it should actually be higher okay it should be higher than the left shoulder because it should be giving an indication that the buying pressure is stepping in giving you an indication of the higher trend higher probability moves to the upside and once again once identifying a neckline you'd be basically trading the break of that neckline with i was just the stop beneath the right shoulder now once again on an intraday basis there are variations on a theme there but if you if you're a new trader and just being able to understand okay head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders and where you can see them they can be a really useful tool to, to help give you insight into how to trade uh, an intraday reversal uh, and then as i said you've got rising wedges and falling wedges and um, you know as, as a falling wedge as you can see you and very often you'll see it price will be just working its way down into a sort of smaller tighter range and then it basically pops to the uh, top and uh, and the same with the rising wedge okay there you will see it you know working its way up in a tightening range uh, and then basically it will roll its way off there um some people trade that very well I, it wouldn't be my particular favorite pattern okay but that's not to say it, it's not a useful pattern and um, i just find that i my eyes uh, my cognitive recognition ability is much more identified to double tops and uh, head and shoulders okay and, and actually variations on them that, that i particularly use myself So those are kind of price action reverse patterns. There, there are lots of other uh, reverse patterns you may wish to, but I find even just knowing some of these couple of the standard ones, allying them, okay, with some uh, particular candlesticks, that in itself, I'm starting to sort of build a confluence of events that can help me um, enormously. Uh, and then the, um, the final one, okay, which is very, very useful is understanding the importance of previous days highs and lows and um, we have seen and continue to see an increase in trading of um trading markets by you know by algos okay however um markets are still traded by humans okay and and humans look at charts for usual places to, for them to do their business and algos only just pick up on that as well so those kind of levels those areas can be things like big round numbers okay so uh, if you look at um, let's say for example gold you know gold has been you know around about two thousand dollars as as has uh, the russell's been around two thousand etc you look at things like bitcoin you know they they like big round numbers okay it bounced off forty thousand and now we are up you know above sixty thousand as we speak here today big round numbers can be useful but also previous highs and lows and previous and highs and lows are in themselves tradable opportunities especially in an intraday basis so you will see people will use previous days highs and lows and you can also use previous weeks highs and lows previous months highs and lows even previous years highs and lows are levels that will be of interest because they may provide uh, fascinating reversal opportunities but as a general rule 
previous day's highs and lows are a great starting point okay to, to look at as a way and means of where we could identify and trade um uh, intraday reversals so why in particular do they become uh interesting okay why in particular are they tradable well there's quite a few reasons one of them is because there are usually lots of stops there okay lots of people's stop losses are there behind the previous day's highs and lows so they become attractive areas for for dealers for for market makers and um, they also they offer a point for a mean reverse trade and that's probably easier to explain when we look at a couple of charts whereby price is broken out of its range and is more likely on an intraday basis to revert back into that range and so what that does is that means it becomes an ideal setup for a reversal trade so why don't we have a look at a few ideas okay and a few thoughts because if you're new to it okay this might just give you a little bit of a help and insight into into you know how you could identify particular areas that um, that are useful to um to look at you know where you could look and find intraday reversal opportunities so um and I've got quite a few different examples in here. So, you know, this is our Aussie dollar 15 minute chart. Uh, and actually, all I've done is just drawn in the kind of levels where you can see actually was the previous day's high there. And what happens is today or in the, when this particular chart printed, well, you know, where did the where did the move north um, end? Well, it ended, OK, at the previous day's high. Right. And, you know, there was kind of like three sort of. Uh, three highs I couldn't actually get each of those three candles could not get a, above the previous day's high and if it can't get up above it where does it go well then invariably it reverts back into the middle right back into the middle of that range now it, of course it does actually go further than that but you don't you don't know that at the time but as an opportunity as a place where to see you know a reversal trade setup to give you a mean reversion back into where the majority of the business has been done that starts to become kind of useful and, and what i've tried to do here is um i've tried to use quite scruffy examples okay you know there's one or two really perfect really good but i've also put in quite a few scruffy examples because invariably that's what you see when you're in front of the chart on your own okay it's lovely to look at absolutely sweet picture clear perfect opportunities but the you know the reality is that when you're there on your own trading away they're not always perfect and it's just to show that you know charts don't have to look perfect to provide you with opportunity so um you know that kind of leads into this like this euro dollar 15 minute chart and what i just want you to recognize is that you know um on the 15 minute chart each of these vertical lines is, is you know is a, is a news day's trading uh, and what we see is that basically you know as we start the day price pushes up to the previous day's high pushes beyond it but actually when it comes back it is flipped it's flipped from being resistance to support before we work our way down and then basically then actually what do we have there that is a double top pattern that price basically pushes it before it reverses the following day we're in the consolidation period and then what actually happens is price comes down to the previous day's low the previous day's low and then what we see is we see a reversal there okay a reversal into a one two three pattern before we shoot our way up and we put in our high of the day and the next day what happens is well price comes up and the first time it comes up it actually gets rejected okay and we see that actually even then when it comes up it initially gets rejected before it shoots up or does it print there's a double top there before it comes its way back in so as a bit of a scruffy example it's not perfect because actually markets aren't perfect but once you start looking at where are the highs and the lows okay the previous day's highs and the lows you will start to see exactly how often a markets move towards it that day or be you know how there is a uh, how there is a, a reaction okay and that reaction might be offering up a reversal opportunity that uh, we can take advantage of <clears throat> yeah just I mean, lots of different examples pound against yen on the 15 minute chart you know on this day this was the high here we've had a nice trend up it's you know put in a uh, a move there but actually what we see is that when we come back up to that okay in this session what do we print we print a pin bar before we fall away we come back up okay later on in the day and it actually can't get above it before it drops its way down and here it prints the the low of that day and the next day into the early session to the asian session excuse me we come beneath it but we can't we can't and um, actually excuse me a little bit of cough there yeah oh, excuse me yeah, we can't we can't go any lower we actually just go sideways before price rallies its up way up 
And where does it rally up to? Well, it rallies up to the two previous day's highs, and that's where we get that reaction there. So, you know, what I suggest in your traders is just make sure that you're drawing on your previous day's highs and lows. And even just to begin with, just look at how often price moves towards those levels and how often it actually we, uh, you know, it provides an opportunity. Um, and we'll we'll look at a little bit more um, on these opportunities here. And um, sometimes, you know, sometimes on an intraday basis, the uh, the markets can be quite tight. The range, other times, they can be quite um, quite major. What we see here is on this day here, on day one, you know, this was the low here, and then actually price rallies its way up. Uh, and in the session on the next day, on day two, uh, well, actually, what we get here is, you know, we get a double top there, don't we? We get a double top before we basically work our way all the way down, okay? Work all the way down, and then we have a low here. And so what happens is in the next session is we come into the low of the previous day and the low of the second day. And actually, what we have is that what we get there is that's what's called a, a false breakout before we come back in. And where do we actually move to? We move all the way back up to the previous day's high. Now, um, this was on news here. There was, you know, there was a, um, uh, there was news coming out, but you can see even that big move, okay, stopped. And where did it stop? It stopped at the previous day's high, which was also the double top there uh, before it before it fell its way down. Okay. And, you know, and this is what we want to be able to see, as I said, identifying those levels and realizing that actually they start to become magnets. Okay, most they become magnets, and it's actually once price gets there, that's when I'm starting to get interested in. You know, is it pro providing me with a particular price action candlestick that's giving me a reversal, or is there a price action reversal pattern? Or uh, even better, there's a mixture of all three. You know, there is candlesticks, there is patterns at previous days, highs and lows, because that is the confluence of events I'm looking for. That is what's going to give me uh, an, an edge in my uh, in my reversal trading. <laughs> yes, yeah, so just yeah, you know, just have just more examples of you know how how price basically will you know will react, okay, and how you know we can. We can have a lovely double bottom here, okay, off the 200 period moving average. But once we move back up, where do we move? We we'll move to the previous day's high, and what actually happens is it reverses off that. You know, and this is what we start to see. You know, identifying our previous day's highs and lows and seeing does price reverse off it because that is what provides that mean reversion trade back into the sort of the the main range of the uh, of the of the instrument. Uh, you know, uh, and what we can see is just basically, yep, yeah, you know, here actually in the pound against the Aussie, we had a nice double top here, excuse my uh, drawings, then before we drifted all the way down. Okay. Uh, and we had a, you know, day of mostly sort of kind of going sideways until until we went down to the kind of, you can see the previous day's lows. Okay. Previous day's lows. You know, we, we reacted off it. Okay. Reacted off it before we pushed away. Okay. And that's just as a, as a trader, that is just, it becomes an area where we can start to look at, okay. At uh, focusing or getting ready to make trading decisions at that area. As I generally often say to traders, you, know, you don't really want to be trading in the middle of the ranges. We want to be tra trading at the extremes, at the ed edges, because that is where my opportunity is, especially on uh, an intraday basis. <laughs> Um, it, the, the reason what I'm talking about here is that yes, okay, uh, that price was in. Well, actually, price was in a bit of a wedge, uh, downward wedge there, you know. But we printed our low, uh, and actually, what happened is we price came down here, and this is the 15 minute chart. Now, um, you'll find very aggressive traders will actually just basically fade the high and the low. All right, they'll literally have orders in to fade the low, to fade the high. Um, uh, Whereas I, that is not my style, okay? What I like to do is to see how does price action play out? What is it actually telling me? Is it giving me an indication? So in this particular case, well, in this particular case, it's like a, it becomes a double bottom there, okay? So it's giving me a double bottom. There's also, you know, bullish uh, pin bar there. And so that's giving me an indication that we are likely to to basically move back up into the uh, into the range, okay? It wasn't particularly pretty, okay? And it sort of bounced around sideways. But as I said, you know, it's a case of... Um, you don't want to always look at the, the prettiest examples. You want to see how does it really work in the real world? You know, how can I actually basically take it on board and use it my um, use it myself? Yeah, and just, you know, uh, uh, more examples of just, as I said, just starting to recognize, okay, where these levels are and how does price react to it? You know, do you get, like in that case, you know, a, a bullish pin bar before we drifted our way up? Uh, and then actually what we got there was a triple 
top before we fell down. But the low, all right, that was the low of the day. It's a real move there. And actually, once again, we've come back down to it. And what did we do? We actually printed a, a, a bullish engulfing candle before we moved our way up there. Um, uh, so you can probably understand that I trade a lot of uh, sterling on, on an intraday basis. That generally tends to be my kind of uh, 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 instrument of choice. But um, understanding previous days, highs and lows, understanding price reversal patterns and understanding price reversal candlesticks, it, you know, it doesn't matter whether you are trading sterling, whether you're trading euro, whether you're trading gold, whether you're trading uh, FTSE or DAX, okay? It's the it's the understanding the concept, okay? Understanding the concept and then understanding the context. That That is what is key, okay? And any trader can take that away and utilize that in their, uh, in their own trading themselves. Now, what we also want to talk about, remember what I was saying, is that I want a confluence of events. Ideally, what I'm looking for is previous days, highs and lows, price action reversal pads and price action candlesticks. When I get those three together, that becomes your edge. OK, that becomes your edge. That becomes what you want to focus on. That becomes what you want to be looking at. That's where I want to be doing um, my particular business. So um, this is an example of a five minute chart on the Kiwi dollar. Uh, you can probably see where all that the, kind of some of the highs, OK, from the previous days and weeks highs are. OK, so uh, I have a tool for uh, uh, my active trade, uh, Meta Traders 4 and 5 that sort of already draws in the previous week's high and the previous day's high. But what I'm interested in is we can see price rallies its way back up to those levels, rallies up to the previous days, okay? Rallies up to the previous days. And then what do we get here? We get, you know, we've got previous day's high where we print a double top, okay? Uh, and what is point three? Point three is also a bearish pin bar. It is also a bearish evening star. So I've got confluence of events. Remember, that's what I'm always looking for, confluence of events. I'm looking for two, three, four things to come together, one time and place. That is my trade setup. Okay, And as you can see, we drifted all the way back down to that 200 period moving average. And that's your move. That can be your simple intraday move. So, uh, you know, kind of just to reiterate again and again, the price action candlesticks, learning them are good. Learning price action reversal patterns is good understanding previous days highs and low are is, is exceptionally useful as well and when actually they all come together in one time and place that becomes you know that becomes really kind of key for us that confluence that's where we start to to build and define our own edge from being able to 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 do that and it becomes easier to do the more like anything it becomes easier to do the more you practice it the more you practice identifying you know particular candlesticks identifying price action reversal patterns and also ensuring that you're drawing in those levels for previous days highs previous weeks highs and lows and just see how those price react to them because that can be unbelievably um, useful as a uh, as a tool for uh, for yourself so um I think it was uh, Patrick earlier on in the session was talking about, you know, how, how can you make the difference between a reversal or a uh, retracement uh, and how can you do using indicators? Well, um, as you can probably see from all of my charts, I, I don't really use any additional indicators. So I'm not using, you know, I'm not using RSI or MACD or uh, CCI or stochastic. Um, you can, okay, and if I was going to use them to help me with reversals, what I'd be looking for is divergence, okay? That's what the way I'd use it if I was using an indicator. You just have to remember, even divergence only works 50% of the time. So you can't really use divergence just on its own. What you need is that confluence of events again. So, you know, if it, just on this particular example, if there was that, you know, um, as, you know I've got uh, a double top, with the second leg has a pin bar and an evening star at the previous day's high. And there was also divergence on an indicator. Well, that would give me great confidence. But I myself, I am very happy to work off just basically price action patterns, price action candlesticks at levels that are of relevance and are of interest to me. OK, and that's the way um, that's the way I look at it in terms of working out whether it's a reversal or a retrace. Well, on an intraday basis, because I am waiting until price gets to an area where I think there is more likelihood of a reversal. Well, then that gives me the opportunity to sort of take advantage of it. Let's just looking at this, say we say, we, you know, say, you know, we've been above our averages uh, and say that, you know, we've had our double top. Uh, and we started to move down there, okay, and then actually price decided to to continue in its uptrend, 
well, you know, because I'm because I'm short here. By the time that basically price is moving up, I have the time to recognise that actually this trade is unlikely to work out, uh, and I can basically scratch this trade. Okay, and that's 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 fine by me. So, um, so yeah, so uh, you know, I don't personally use indicators, and be you know because I'm looking for a reversal at a specific time and place. That is what gives me. Um, better confidence to realize this is likely to be a reversal with a, with a reversion to the mean, a reversion back into the majority of the trading, um, the trading zone, rather than it just being a little bit of a, uh, a, you know, a retrace on a, um, uh, on a, on a longer term trend. So I hope that, uh, hope that helps um, you know, Patrick. So as I've just been saying, you know, yeah, you know, if you're looking at those highs and lows, how do you actually trade them? Well, on an intraday basis, on an intraday basis, 80% of the time markets are range bound. So once price reaches a boundary like the previous day's high, the previous day's low, then look for that mean reversion setup. That's what we're looking for. Look for you know, price action reversal patterns and price action candlesticks. Okay. And that is what gives you the confluence of events. I don't personally just fade highs and lows. Some traders do and do it well. That's absolutely fine. You know, but that's not my way. I like to see price get to that level, to that boundary. And then I like to for it to give me a signal that it's going to reverse, whether it be double top, double bottom, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, okay? Price action candlesticks like key reversals, pin bars, et cetera. That, that is what works for me. That that bringing those elements together is uh, what um, is what, uh, you know, how I develop edge at trading intraday reversals. So um, here is a little bit of homework for you today. Okay. You know me, I always like to say a little bit of homework to, to take away. So you take away from today's session, um, go away and look, well, you know, look at any chart. Might be your favorite trading instrument, might be a completely new one. Have a look at it on the intraday time scale. So five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. If you don't have an indicator that draws in the previous day's highs and lows, okay, then just draw them in, okay? Draw them in from the previous day's highs and lows. It's not a bad exercise to do anyway because it forces you to identify where they are. And then look, how did the market react when it came back to those levels the next day, okay? Did the market regularly break through those levels and carry on or – did it bounce off those levels? Did it get to those levels and then print a reversal pattern, reversal candlestick, and then you know pull its way back into the range? Just take away, just you know, go away and do that exercise. You'll find it useful. You know, you'll find it um, enormously helpful in terms of getting an understanding of how intraday markets will move. So um, before we switch across to the charts, you know, just a couple of points to conclusion. So um, yeah, you know, here we are, Monday Market Matters, okay, in 2024, because it's going to be an interesting year in markets. Uh, and I hope you'll join us uh, weekly to enjoy that journey. Trading intraday reversals is possible. As always, if you're trading intraday, you need to be aware of any impending news announcements. You don't want to get caught on the wrong side of that. But what we're thinking of and looking at is that 80% of the time, intraday FX markets in particular are, are practically range bound. Okay. So, with that in mind, it is in our best interest to learn how to trade reversal and mean reversion setups. So, what I suggest is watch how price reacts around previous days, highs, and lows. You know, and you could use previous weeks and previous months, but previous days, highs, and lows is a good starting point. And these are good areas to find a trade setup, all right? Uh, and as I said, maybe we'll do a little bit more of that in future sessions. We'll do some specific setups. But there's an opportunity just to start to put those elements together to utilize them for, um, for your own, you know, trading of intraday reversals. So um, before we switch across the live charts, just a quick reminder that um, uh, next Monday, 11th of March, all right, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about trading, use and supply and demand. That will be the uh, educational element of our Monday Market Matters webinar. Uh, I hope you'll join us the, for that. Um, and as I said, you know, I'll also be in London this week with the cash and the team. So be sure to come and join us. OK, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing and meeting a few of you and putting names and faces uh, at the London Trader Show. Uh, and as always, if you've got any questions or if you've got feedback, you can do so. You email there, englishdeskatactivetrades.com. Maybe the subjects you like 
to see me cover in future sessions that's absolutely fine send them an email but do that that's always welcome it's always useful uh, and if you just bear with us a moment we've got a few minutes left i'll switch across to the charts and let's have a little look at how the uh, how the uh, uh, the us markets have opened up and set up for the uh, for the start of the session so just bear with us one moment and we'll switch across to the charts so um, I'm hoping you can still hear my voice. I'm hoping that you can see the uh, the, the charts here. Okay. So um, I just got these are my kind of US indices intraday charts. So let's uh, get the old drawing tool up here. So um, I have the the kind of the the Dow here, the Russell, okay, the SP 500, the the Nasdaq, okay. Um, and if you've joined us for the first uh, for these sessions in the past, you know what I talk about is, you know, at the opening of the US sessions, um, what I like to do is I normally so, you know, it, it is here in the UK, it is, you know, 2.30, okay, when they open. So that'll be, you know, 9.30 uh, Eastern US time, okay? So please relate that to wherever you're joining us. I appreciate we have a global audience. Um, but generally, for the, at least for the kind of first 15, 20 minutes, I tend to sort of stay out of that market, especially on a Monday, um, because you can have an awful lot of like weekend volatility coming through and it's, uh, uh, you know, and being able to, to identify and work with that okay let the markets you know do its thing and then actually start to to get an interest in you know what it might actually do so um and what i look for that it's just there is you know i'm kind of let me just uh here we go like just looking at particular well i'm looking at particular um levels okay i want to sort of look at you know where have been the kind of you know the the sort of highs of the session so far just recognizing that one and to be aware of the first 30 minute session we can see we've had a very bullish having sold off there we've had a real bullish um, bullish start there on the uh, on the Dow there okay for the first 20 minutes which we'll look at interestingly if we look <clears throat> at the Nasdaq interestingly this is you know what happened here look at that okay that is the previous that was Friday's high and so it was the previous day's high and the previous week's high and we can see that we've come off uh, and we've reversed off it there and have a little bit of a look at that this morning so yeah look at let me just look at this here for you so <clears throat> what we had here is excuse me you know um what we had is that we came into previous days high previous weeks high and we had a a double top there uh, and what was this candle here okay the second handle of it that is you know it's a that's a rejection candle it's a pin bar it's an engulfing candle and um, it didn't close i don't think it closed beneath the low of the previous candle so it's not a key reversal but it is still remember confluence of events okay you've got a double top pin bar engulfing candle at the previous day's high and the previous week's high uh, and look how we look how we traded for remember this is a 15 minute chart so for the next two hours okay for the next two hours we basically descended all right that's that's you know that's what we're looking for okay that's what we look for confluence of events ladies and gentlemen okay where two three four things all come together time and a place that is your trade the challenge you have because nothing is perfect is actually the challenge you have is that you know having the patience to to wait all right to 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 wait to see how that plays out now um what you can use okay and you've got great tools to use on the active trades mt4 mt5 active trader trading view is you know of course you can put in alerts once you've identified where previous days previous weeks highs and lows are you can put in alerts to just basically to you know to ping you when price is getting towards that area of interest okay so you can go about your business and and you know but do what you do what you need to do and wait for the alliance to do it so yeah even if i look at this on a five minute chart that was a very strong bearish pinball wasn't it very strong bearish um uh, rejection candle there so that's what's going on there with the nasdaq that <clears throat> let's just look at that here we are in you know, the kind of the, the kind of pre-low all right pre-market low is here so we'll, yeah it's where it's at 50 so i'll be interested to see if we go to the lower time frames let's what's it doing here on so the one minute chart yeah it's just it's just maybe basing here a little bit so i'll wait to see this to me looks like it's a little bit of a squeeze on the nasdaq i'll be i'll just uh, i'll just watch that and let that uh, particularly play out remember what i was saying is that i like to see the uh the indices all operate in unison so if the if the nasdaq is dropping and the dow uh is is rising okay and the, the russell's rising and the s p is rising you know I'm, I'm always i'm always preferring where there is correlation between them but um you know it's trading what you want and what you get is not always the uh, it's not always the very same thing okay so i'm just looking at that on the dow five minute charts that's very bullish there okay um 
has been, I think, maybe we're at the 200 period, maybe comes drops down to the 50, uh, and then we make a decision on what it wants to do there. So I'll just be keeping an eye on that. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep an eye on that. If we look at, uh, yeah, SP 500. So, you know, um, what I'd be viewing here as an intraday trader is looking at, we've come down to the 50 period moving average, we've bounced off it just as we go into the end of it. My next view would be, well, okay, um, I'd be interested to see, you know, this was the, this was the morning high here let's just look at that bang to me i'll be looking at that's the morning hype now it's near the london your asian session into the london session that was i uh, see how does price react there and then also is it more likely to get dragged up to magnet here to the previous day's high the previous week's high in which case you know if it does that then i'd be looking to see well does it present a price action reversal pattern price action reversal candlestick does it do any of those things that's what i'd be particularly interested to see and as i said the challenge is you're just going to be patient enough to wait to see if that can if it, if it can get up there and do that so that's what i'll be yeah i'd certainly be watching that on the uh, on the s p 500 see how that uh, plays its way out there um once we're, let's just have a little look at um because of course gold has been um very strong this is a four hour chart on gold over the last um a few days it's been very strong indeed um yeah what, you know you know there was gold this morning you know what we can see is it, it, the way it came up to the previous day's high, didn't it? Friday's high, and then it it reversed off it. Okay, intraday reversal. Let's have a little look. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank. So we'll just try and get to this. Uh... So yeah, so you know, we came up here. It was as I said you've got the line there. Previous day's high. Yeah, right. Previous day's high. Previous week's high. Came up to it. You know, what did we do there? We put printed. You know, there's a pin bar there, rejection candle, and we sort of drifted our way down from there, didn't we? That's the kind of you know, that's the move you people are looking for. It's the move people want to particularly see. Okay, um, the five minute chart. Okay, it's just it's just putting together that pin bar there in the five minute chart. I wonder if even the uh, um, one minute chart might be uh, might not necessarily be ideal for it. Might be a bit too much and a bit too. Um, so, yeah, you know, you can see even on the one minute chart is kind of like twin tower, just gets up there, reverse reverses off it, and that's um that's what people are interested in. So as I said, you can just see that even from this morning, just looking at how we've got those kind of you know rejection candles at previous day weeks high, okay, and the breakout of the Asian session, you've got confluence of events, two, three, four things come together one time and place, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so it looks like Nasdaq is uh, Nasdaq is actually so sort of wants to push a bit lower first. So yeah, it's uh, about fifty there, and the the low session, but it seems to want to push lower. Let's have a little look at that. We'll, we'll close that. So I'll be keeping a I'll be keeping an eye on that. See if it if it um, if that continues or whether there's a um, maybe there's a no maybe not maybe there's not a reversal not yet anyway. It uh, seems to know what it wants to it seems to know what it wants to do. And it seems to want to go in the opposite direction from where the uh, from where the others are going. Okay, which is always uh, has me a little bit nervous. Okay, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have to uh, um, draw a close there. Uh, you know, as you say, time flies when you're having fun. Um, I hope that has uh, given you just a bit of insight into intraday reversals and being aware of price action candlesticks, price action reversal patterns, previous days highs and lows, and how when you start to combine them, that becomes a very compelling. Um, trade case, okay, in terms of, uh, you know, I, identifying opportunities to trade. Um, as always, I wish you the best of success in your own trading endeavours, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a fabulous trading week, and hopefully I'll see you, maybe some of you on Friday at the London Trader Show. Uh, until then, trade well, everybody, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.